Welcome. This is a lesson on proof by induction for Leaving Cert higher level maths. So proof by induction follows a series of logic steps. If you follow these, you'll always do OK. So the first step is to prove that the mathematical statement is true for the first value of n. Often we start with n equals 1, the first natural number. The second step is to make an assumption, something we're going to say is true without proof. So step two is to assume the statement is true for some number n equals k. So we use the letter k instead of n. The third step then is based on that. We're going to show that based on the previous assumption, which was using n equals k, that the statement is also true for when n equals k plus 1, the next number following k. So if you do this, it follows then by induction that the statement must be true for all values of n greater than the first value. So if we've started with it being true for n equals 1, Therefore, it must be true for the next number up, n equals 2. And if it's true for n equals 2, it must be true for n equals 3, and so on. And for all the natural numbers after that. So there are four main types or categories of proofs by induction that you may be asked. Uh, the first one is to do with sums, so adding things together. The second one is to do with divisibility, show that something is divisible by or is a factor of. And uh, the third one is inequalities, show that something is greater than or less than. And the fourth one is Demophorus theorem. Now let's start with sums and this letter here at the top um, beside it is sigma. Okay, it's a Greek letter and you may have seen it in, in integration and it means to sum up or to add. And the method here will be, um, as always, start with your n equals 1, show that the statement is true for n equals 1, and assume it is true for n equals k. Now you're going to add the n equals k plus 1 term to both sides. So you're keeping an equation true by adding the same thing to both sides. And let's see how that goes. But first we'll look at notation. Uh, sigma means to sum or to add up. And if you're given something like this, uh, you're told sigma n means to add all the n's so sigma means to add, add all the n's from n equals 1. So underneath here gives you the starting value and then up to n equals k. So the, this value at the top tells you when to stop. So what this represents here that I've drawn the oval around is starting with 1. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 up until whatever value is k. And you, you'll get used to that with practice. Um, here's another one using the letter r here. So it's telling me to add r squares. Okay, Add all the r squares starting with r is 1 up until the value of k. So you start with 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared and you always go up in ones. So here's our first example of um, a sum. Prove by induction for all positive integers n that, and this is our statement, sigma 5r from r equals 1 to n equals 5n divided by 2 times n plus 1. Okay, so let's see what we're trying to do here. We're going to follow the steps. So let's start with n equals 1. So on the left hand side we have to put in our sum. 
okay? And if we're just using one, well then it's from one to one. And there's only one term and five R will be five times one. Okay, so that's the left hand side. I'll put an L there and an L here. Okay, so now we're going to substitute into the right hand side. I'll put a rectangle around that. Every place you see the letter N, we're going to put in the number one. So we'll have five times one over two is to be multiplied by one plus one. And we get five times, five divided by two times two, which is one, so we get five. So what we've shown is that five equals to five, that left equals to right. And so we can make the statement here that our statement above is true for n equals one. And that's the first step. In your exam, if you follow the steps, you will get uh, marks for each step that you complete. So even if you don't finish it out to the, f to the end, get as far down as you can. Now for the second step, we're going to assume, so we're just going to say that it is true without any proof that when n equals k, we assume the following is true. So you replace your r above with the letter k. Okay. So taking our sum expression, what does it represent? Well, it represents 5 times 1 plus 5 times 2 plus 5 times 3 plus everything in between up until 5 times k. So that's my left hand side. And we're assuming it's true to the right hand side where we replace n above with the letter k. And that's that step done. Again, more attempt marks. So we're just assuming it's true and we're working with just these two aspects of it on the next slide. So I want you to just have a quick look there at what we have on the left and what we have on the right because we'll bring that forward to the next slide. So the third step is to show it's true for when n equals k plus one. So what we're going to do is for n equals k plus one, we're going to add the, the k plus one term. Okay. I'll change my pen back to blue. Um, the k plus one term is when you take what's been summed, all the five r's, and replace r with k plus one. And this is what's going to be added to the left and to the right of what we had on the previous slide. Okay, so let's take a look at that. All right, so you see it's been added here to the left and it's been added here to the right. Okay, now what do we need to do? We need to show that the statement is true for when n equals k plus one. And that means that we have to take our right hand side okay or rhs and we have to make it look like the original statement on the right hand side which looked like 5n over 2 and that had to be multiplied by n plus 1. okay so we need to work with this side to make it look like that so taking the right hand side and the first step there is to get a common denominator which is 2 common denominator and therefore uh, the term on the right uh, needs to be multiplied by 2 and that's where the 10 came from. Okay, take a moment to look at that. Okay, next we're going to multiply out those brackets and when you do that for the first multiplication you get 5k squared plus 5k and the second one we get plus 10k plus 10 and it's all over 2. Now, take out 5 as a common factor and we get 5 times k squared plus 3k, that would have come from the combined 15k, plus 2 and it's all divided by 2 again. Let's continue on the next slide. So, uh, what you do next is you would have um, factorised that uh, quadratic expression in the bracket and we get two factors here um, 5 times k plus 1 by k plus 2 all divided by 2 and we're almost there we'll just make it look like we would like it to look 
Okay, remember the right hand side looked like this. All right, and that is what we have here. If you separate um, 5 times k plus 1 over 2, multiply by k plus 2. And there you have the correct format. Okay, when n equals k plus 1. And what can we say then? We can say the statement is true for when n equals k plus 1. And then our final step is to make a statement. Therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all positive integers. And you're finished. Let's look at another example. Now, this example uh, brings in your knowledge on patterns and there's a small bit of uh, preparatory work to do first before we do the four steps. Prove by induction that the sum of the first n natural odd numbers is n squared. So the first thing you've got to do is to read that and understand that and write down a math sentence that represents it. Okay, and this is what it is. The sum, so add, the first n natural odd numbers, so they're positive odd numbers, so that's 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and so on, up until some number tn. And their sum should be equal to n squared. So I'm going to bring in patterns now. We're going to get a, a to work with our n equals k term and our n equals k plus 1 term, I want to represent them in patterns form. Okay, so we've got our first term of our linear pattern here is 1, our common difference is 2, we've got our Tn formula and working with that we can get um, an expression for the general term Tn and it is 2n minus 1. So what do I need that for? Well I need it when I want to include the kth term here all right, so replace n with k and also for the k plus 1th term, so replacing n with k plus 1, simplifying, this is what you get for the k plus 1 term. So we may need that a little later. So tk is 2k minus 1 and tk plus 1 is 2k plus 1. We'll use those in a bit. Now let's go through the steps for proof by induction. We'll start with n equals 1. So adding the odd numbers on the left, well you just have 1 equal to n squared, that's 1 squared on the right, so 1 equals 1. It is true for n equals 1 and you should write that statement true for n equals 1. Now assume the statement is true for n equals k. So here we write it out and here you've seen so we've all the odd numbers, 1 plus 3 plus 5 and so on. And here from the previous slide is our tk. Okay, and that should be equal to k squared. That's what we're assuming. All right. And now for the n equals k plus 1, we will add the k plus 1 term to both sides. Okay, and here you see that. Here you've added your t k plus 1 and we've added it here also. So this is what we're going to work with on the next slide to make it look like it should. Now, so taking the right hand side from the previous equation uh, let's work with this. We have a quadratic expression. Let's factorize it and we get two factors k plus 1 times k plus 1 which is of course k plus 1 squared which is what we wanted on the right hand side and now we can say that the expression is true when n equals k plus 1. And step 4 we just have to state therefore by induction the statement is true for all natural odd numbers job done. The next type of proof by induction is around divisibility and the logic around this type of proof is if the n equals k term 
and the next one, the n equals k plus 1 term, are divisible by a number x, well then their difference will also be divisible by x. So difference by difference we mean if we subtract them, then the result of the subtraction should also be divisible by x. So the method, again you're going to show that the n equals 1 term first is divisible by x. Then assume that the n equals k term is divisible by x. Then find the difference, so subtract um, n equals k and n equals k plus 1 terms. And then show that the difference is divisible by x. So let's do an example. Prove that the function p of n, which is equal to 7 to the power of n minus 1, is divisible by 6 for all n element of natural numbers, so for all the natural numbers. So let's follow the steps and the logic. So for n equals 1, we get p of 1, which is 7 to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 6, and we know that this is divisible by 6, so we can say that it's true for n equals 1. That's step 1 of proof by induction. Uh, step 2, we have to look to n equals k. So p of k, which is equal to 7th power of k minus 1, and we assume this is true. That means we assume that the number 6 will divide into this expression. Now let's go to step 3 and the k plus 1 term. And here's the logic. If p of k plus 1 is divisible by 6, then when you subtract or take p of k plus 1 and subtract p of k, the result should be divisible by 6. So the first thing we'll do is we'll uh, write out p of k plus 1. So when you do this, k plus 1 appears here as a power. Okay. Um, after that, uh, what I've done is I have used my knowledge of indices to say that 7th power of k plus 1 is equal to 7th power of k times 7th power of 1. Okay, uh, this might become useful in a moment. So doing the subtraction then, we've got our um, p of k plus 1 from above minus p of k. I'm using brackets there. Uh, complete the subtraction, what you'll see is that the 1's will cancel out, okay, and um, so the 1's will cancel out, and on the next line I've taken 7 to the power of k out as a common factor, and uh, what am I left with? I'm left with 7 minus 1. And of course, 7 minus 1 is 6. So we have 6 times 7 to the power of k is the difference. And because it's 6 times something, it is of course divisible by 6. And therefore, we can say the statement is true for and the, the fourth k step plus just one to make term. your statement. Therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all natural numbers. And that's your proof complete. Uh, another example, a uh, slightly different take on it. Prove that the function f of n, which is equal to 7 to the power of 2n plus 1 plus 1, is divisible by 8 this time for all the natural numbers. So we'll start the process uh, with n equals 1. And so you'll get 7 to the power of 3, which is 3, 4, 3, plus 1, which is 3, 4, 4. And if you try, you'll see that um, 3, 4, 4 may be divided by 8. It goes in uh, 43 times. Okay, so it's true for n plus 1. Uh, moving on, replace your n with a k. We get f of k is equal to 7 power of 2k plus 1 plus 1, and we're going to assume it's true. We're going to assume that it's divisible by 8. 
And then the third step is we're going to work with the k plus 1 term. And we're going to get the difference between f of k plus 1 and f of k, so subtracting. And hopefully it will work out to be divisible by 8. All right, so the first step is to write down um, the function f of k plus 1. And in place of n here, you have k plus 1. OK, so you have 7 to that big long power, plus 1. Um, if you multiply out that bracket, you'll get 2k plus 2, and then plus 1, and then tidy it up a little bit. So what are we left with here? We have 7 to the power of 2k plus 3 plus 1. OK, uh, we're going to subtract. Now we'll take our f of k plus 1 is the first part, f of k plus 1. Subtract your f of k. And let's see what we can do. All right, so that's just applying the, the minus sign correctly to each term. Now, if you take... Uh, firstly, the 1s will cancel, like the previous example. If you take 7 to the power of 2k plus 1 as a common factor and use your division of powers, so if you have 7 to the power of 2k plus 3 divided by 7 to the power of 2k plus 1, when you subtract the powers, you'll be left with 7 to the power of 2. So that's what's happening here. Okay, taking your 7 to the power of 2k plus 1 out as a, a common, highest common factor, you're left with 7 squared coming from here, minus 1 coming from here. And when you work out that bracket, you get 49 minus 1. So 49 minus 1 will give you 48. And of course, 48 is divisible by 8. Um, it's equal to 6. And so what you've shown there is that the statement is true for n equals k plus 1, or for the k plus 1 term, it's divisible by 8. Then your final statement, therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all the natural numbers. Example 5. All right. Prove by induction that 3 is a factor of 5n to the power of n minus 2 to the power of n for all the natural numbers and for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so to show something is a factor is the same thing as showing it um, that expression is divisible by 3. So this one has a slightly different approach using an unknown quantity a. So let's have a look at this. Let's start, as always, with our n equals 1 term. 5 to the power of 1 minus 2 to the power of 1. So that's 5 minus 2, which is 3, which is, of course, divisible by 3. So it's true for n equals 1. That's the first step complete. Let's write down our n equals k term. So just copy. And we're going to say, instead of saying it's divisible by, we're going to say that the answer here is equal to 3 times some number. which is So it's another way of saying it's divisible by 3. It will be equal to 3 times some number a. And this is our assumption for step 2. Okay, so this is a slightly different approach. Um, you have to decide which one is appropriate for your question. Let's continue and see how it works out. OK, for later use, OK, I've rearranged that slightly and added 2 to the power of k to both sides. So we're rearranging that and it becomes, gives me expression for 5 to the power of k. We get 3a plus 2 to the power of k. So going on to the third step and the k plus 1 term, let's firstly write it down with k plus 1 in the um, position where n was in the original statement. So 5 to the power of k plus 1 minus 2 to the power of k plus 1. All right, now we're going to start by um, separating those powers, um, saying that 5 to the power of 1 by 5 to the power of k is the same, and do the same for the 2's. So why? Uh, recall that um, 
we had an expression on the previous slide for 5 to the power of k. All right, and we're going to start by substitution and replacing 5 to the power of k. So there we have that. Okay, now let's multiply out that bracket and see what we have. All right, um, what you'll see here is uh, two terms with 2 to the power of k in them. We have 5 minus 2, so that will leave us on the next line with three of them. So we have 15a plus 3 times 2 to the power of k. And of course, um, you see a factor of 3 in both of those terms. Uh, taking that out, removing it again, and you get 3 times 5a plus 2 to the power of k. So it's 3 times something, so therefore it's divisible by 3, and we've shown what we want to show. Um, therefore, it is true for n equals k plus 1. And your final step is to make your statement. Therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all natural numbers uh, greater than or equal to 1. Now, the next type of proof by induction is inequalities. And the idea behind these proofs are, okay, so to find the n equals k term within the n equals k plus 1 term. All right, the method involves uh, showing that the inequality is true for the first term, so that's what we always do. Assuming it's true for the n equals k term, finding the n equals k term and its inequality within the next one, the k plus 1 inequality, and look at the other parts of the inequality and show that the inequality holds for those parts also. Again, we'll see it best through an example. So, prove that n factorial is greater than 2 to the power of n for n greater than or equal to 4 in the natural numbers. So, take note of this. Sometimes you're not starting at n equals 1. Okay, sometimes your first uh, value may be different. And so, in this case, in our first step, we won't be starting with n equals 1. We're going to start with n equals 4. And we write down the expression when n equals 4. So we get 4 factorial, and we have to show that it's greater than 2 to the power of 4. Now recall 4 factorial. Um, it is 24. What is it again? It's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and it is 24. And 2 to the power of 4 is 16, so 24 is greater than 16. So uh, the statement is true for n is equal to 4. So that's our first step. Second step, as always, is n equals k. Just write it down. So k factorial is greater than 2 to the power of k, and this is our assumption that is true for n equals k. Step 2 is done. Now let's go to step 3. This is the most difficult. Uh, we'll write it down firstly. k plus 1 factorial greater than 2 to the power of k plus 1. And now we're going to expand and, and work with both sides. Okay, so k plus 1 factorial is equal to k plus 1 multiplied by all the previous numbers, so k factorial. So for example, 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 factorial because it's equal to 5 times then the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, there's your, so if this were k plus 1 multiplied by k factorial, that's the same as saying k plus 1 factorial. That's where that comes from. And on the right hand side, you just separate your powers. 2 to the power of 1 by 2 to the power of k is the same as 2 to the power of k plus 1. Okay, now, by our previous assumption, we have already said that k factorial, so this one I'm marking here, is greater than 2 to the power of k. We've already shown that. Okay. And now we have to ask for the other parts. k plus 1. Is it greater than k plus, or greater than just 2? Okay, so that's what we're asking. 
and if we're starting with the number 4, okay, then 4 plus 1 is definitely greater than 2, so is 5 plus 1 and so, f so on, okay, so therefore k plus 1 is greater than 2 and all of the left hand side should be greater than the right hand side. And so the statement is true for n equals k plus 1. Sorry, I meant to put an R down there. Left is greater than right. OK. And last step then is your statements. Therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all natural numbers bigger than 4. Another example of that. Prove that n factorial is greater than 2 to the power of n minus 1 uh, for the natural numbers uh, greater than 3. So we're starting with 3 this time. Write down your expression 3 factorial is it greater than 2 to the power of 3 minus 1 which is 2 to the power of 2. So 3 factorial is 6 and it is greater than 2 squared which is 4. Yes it is. So the statement is true for n equals 3. Second step n equals k. Just write it down with k in place of n. And we're going to assume that this is true. On to the third so on to step 3 and the k plus 1 term. Firstly write it down. Um, now recall we're looking to find the k term within it. Uh, the k term was, um, it said that k factorial was greater than uh, 2 to the power of k minus 1. Okay, so um, with the factorials, we did that before, it's k plus 1 times k factorial. With the powers, so because I'm trying to find this, all right, I'm going to take 2 to the power of k minus 1, put that to the right here, I have that there, and it's going to be multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 here, all right. So you're trying to um, write it in terms of the k term. Okay, so by our previous assumption, k factorial on the left is greater than 2 to the power of k plus 1 on the right. And then we have to question, is k plus 1 on the left greater than 2 on the right? Well, given our initial condition that n should be 3 or bigger, it was stated that n is greater or equal to 3, therefore k plus 1 must be equal to 3 plus 1, which is 4, or 4 plus 1, which is 5. So it must be greater than or equal to that. So the left must be greater than the right. And so the whole statement is true for n equals k plus 1. So we've done our three steps, and the fourth one is just to make your statement. Therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all natural numbers greater than or equal to 3. Now, um, the final one we're going to present here is proof by induction of de Mavre's theorem. And you'll have met de Mavre's theorem in the uh, chapters on complex numbers. Okay, so what is to prove? So here's de Mavre's theorem. It says that cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is equal to cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. And so let's go through the steps. They're the same steps that we use for all the other proofs of induction. So starting with n equals 1, we have cosine theta plus i sine theta all to the power of 1 is equal to cosine 1 theta plus i sine 1 theta. Of course that's equal because powers of 1 and multiplying by 1 don't change anything. So de Mavre's theorem holds for n equals 1. So step 1 is done. Okay, so your second step as always is n equals k. Uh, replace all the n's from the original statement with the letter k and we're going to assume this is true. The third step then is to work with the k plus 1 term. Okay, so we're going to work with the left hand side. Okay, um, put in our new power of k plus 1 and then we're going to use different techniques to um, work with it, okay, to manipulate it and to get it to look like the right hand side here. 
So here we go. So we're writing it down. The cosine theta plus i sine theta is the power of k plus 1. So that's where we start. We're starting with the left hand side and uh, we're going to split up these two powers to give me two brackets here. Cosine theta plus i sine theta is the power of k multiplied by cosine theta plus i sine theta is the power of 1. Now by our previous uh, assumption. So by step two, uh, what can you see here? You, you can see that is from step two. Okay. So we can replace that part and write it as cosine k theta plus i sine k theta and the second bracket remains the same. Okay. So where are we going with this? Well, we're going to use our knowledge of multiplication of complex numbers in polar form. If you recall here, if you multiply two complex numbers, well, you multiply their modulus, R1 by R2, and you add the angles. Okay, you add the angles. Uh, in our example, the moduli R1 and R2 are just one, so they don't feature. So here's what we got, and we're going to add the angles, okay? And it will become, on the right-hand side now, uh, k theta, so from here, plus theta from the right, okay? So it, we get cosine k theta plus theta plus i sine k theta plus theta. All right, and if we take theta as a common factor within that bracket, we get cosine k plus 1 theta plus i sine k plus 1 theta on the right. And this is now is in the form of the original statement. So we've shown that it's true for n equals k plus 1. Uh, what did the original statement say? It said that cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is equal to cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay. And there we've done our proof and we've finished with our statement. Therefore, by induction, the statement is true for all natural numbers. So um, these proof by inductions, they take some practice. Um, it is the same four steps all the time, but there are some tricks as you've seen back through uh, the examples. So uh, what best way to learn them? Go to your exam papers, find them down the years and practice. See which example they're most like. Uh, give it a go. All the best.